let's do our warm up today. We are going to do three good review questions here. So let's get started. You're going to uh, work them all out on your paper and then we'll turn in your warm up paper after uh, the video. Let's begin. So uh, look at number one. The population of a small town in New Jersey was 11,171 in the year 2000. The estimated population growth is 2.1% every four years. So it's only going to grow this 2.1% over a, each four year period. It's not doing that every year, right? It says, what is the estimated population in the year 2024 and at the beginning of next century? We should probably come up with an equation and then we will um, be able to answer both of these questions. So um, since this is um, a growth uh, percent problem, we know it's, it's going to be an exponential function. Right, that's the first thing you should notice is this is an exponential function. So I'm going to write down y equals a times b to the x, and I'll fill in what I know. Well, a I know is the starting amount or the initial amount. And in this case, um, that a is 11,171. But I need to make sure I keep in mind that that is in the year 2000. Okay, so it's not year zero. All right, if that's our starting amount, that's, that's like going to the year 2000 is going to be like when x is zero, okay? So my b is our growth rate, right? Well, this is increasing because it tells me it's growing. So I'm going to have to take my percent, move the decimal, two places to the left. So let's see, 2.1, two places to the left, that's going to be 0.021. And, but I can't use that, right, as my base because then my base has to be bigger than one for this thing to grow. So I'm gonna add one. So that means in place of my B, I'm gonna put 1.021, right? And then I'll have my exponent. Um, so uh, I guess we could, I'll use T for time, why not? I, I could use X, but whatever. All right, the catch here is that it's only doing this every four years, okay? So if I put T in as a time period, let's say 20 years, I would want to take that time, if T were 20 over 20 year period, I wouldn't want it to grow 2.1% 20 times, right? It would only grow this amount every four years. So over a 20 year period, I would only want it to do that five times. So I want to take my years, my time, and divide it by four. Okay, because it's only doing this every four years, All right? So I think that equation is going to work. Let's see what happens. It says find the or estimate the population in the year 2024. Okay, so I'm going to take y equals my 11,171 times my 1.021, but my exponent. Now, guys, look at this. You don't put 2024. All right, and it's not 2,024 years. That's uh, right. Remember. Zero, x of zero match the year 2000. So 2024 would actually match what x value? Well, that's 24 years later. So my x would be 24, or my time, okay, because I used a t in my little equation here, all right? So um, this is a 24 year period. That marker is really not showing up right. Let's do this one. That's a little better. The, it's only 20, it's over a 24 year period. But again, I don't want my exponent to be 24, right? Uh, because I don't want it to do this 24 times. I want it to do it 24 divided by four because it's only doing this every four years, right? So I think what I'll do is I'll go to Desmos and I'll actually type this in as y equals 11,000 times 1.021 to the sixth power, make sure that's on your paper, and I got six by taking the 24 year period, and oh, I only want it to do this percent uh, six times since it's only doing, gonna do this every four years, okay? Let me type that in Desmos and see what the estimated population is. So I'm gonna go right here, and in fact, you, oop, that's not what I wanted. You could probably do this with me if I do y equals 11,171 times 1.021. 1, Miss Felix, there you go. To the, 
I'm going to use an exponent of 6. All right, let me put my glasses on so I can read that. And it looks like the population is going to be around 12,655. We'll bump it up to a 55 people. So 12,655. Let me write that down. All right, so there will be 12,655. That would be the population in the year 2024. The estimated population approximately, okay? Based on what we typed in Desmos. Okay? So it's very important on your paper for uh, number one A, A, right? That you have all this written down on how we came up with that, okay? And then it says, B, at the beginning of the next century. Mm, well, the next century would be 100 years. Hmm. So if we go, let's just base it on the year 2000. So the next century would be 2100, right? So that would be my year I'd be looking for. 2000, because the century is 100 years. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do my same equation. I just need to figure out what my exponent's going to be again. So y equals 11,171 times 1.021. All right, let's see. Um, again, if x equals 0 match the year 2000, then the year 2100... Well, x would be 100, I guess, right? 100 years later. So, um, to get my exponent, I'm going to put in a 100-year period. But, again, it's only doing this every four years, so I'm going to divide that by four. So, when I go to Desmos, I'm going to type in 11,171 times 1.021. 100 divided by four would be to the 25th. Oops. Tw okay, go away. 25th power. Let me type that in Desmos. Oh, that's probably a pretty big number. So let me go back. Actually, I'll just take this equation and change the exponent, right, to 25. Ooh, look at there. 18,782 people. 18,782. So 18,782 would be the population... In, at the beginning of the next century. Huh. That's a fun little problem. I like that. Make sure you got both uh, equations for part A and B on your paper with those answers. Let's do another one. This is a geometric sequence problem, right? Find the next three terms um, of the sequence. I could close this. I don't think I'm going to need Desmos. Find the next three terms of the sequence, then write a rule for the sequence. All right. Uh, 648 to 216. Gosh, that goes down a lot. 216 to 72, 72 to 24. I'm obviously not subtracting, but the numbers are getting smaller, so I must be dividing, but dividing, again, I, when I do this, I have to think in terms of multiplication. Um, now, I don't know about 648, 216, but I'm pretty sure that uh, 24 times 3 is 72. There's 12, yeah, that's right. Which means that I must be multiplying 72 by one-third to get 24. So I bet if I take 216 and multiply it by a third, I get 72. 3 goes into, yep, that's right. So I want to um, make sure that sequence is on your paper for number 2. I want the next three terms. So let's just keep going. So i got to do 24 times a third, which is 24 divided by 3. So that would be 8. And then I gotta take eight and multiply it by a third. Well, eight times a third is just eight thirds. So that's not so bad. But then I gotta take eight thirds and multiply it by a third. So eight over three times one over three equals eight over three times nine. Okay? Yeah. So then you would just keep multiplying by a third and by a third. So actually what would happen is these fractions if I were to continue, the numerator would actually never change, would it? Because I would always be multiplying by 1 over 3. So the numerator would always stay 8 in this scenario, but the denominators would all be multiplied by 3 each time. Okay. All right, so there's our sequence. We wrote the next three terms. It says write a rule. Okay, so we're going to write both a recursive and 
an explicit formula because we need to review it anyway, all right? So the recursive formula, remember, just says, how do I get the next term? So to get a term, any term, I am going to um, take the previous term, a sub n minus 1, that's what that means, the previous term, and I'm going to multiply it by 1 third. So that's the way I would write that. To get the next term, just get the previous one, multiply it by a third. Okay? Easy peasy. Now, the explicit formula, remember, is the one that's more useful because, oh, by the way, I should probably say that the sequence starts at 648, right? Whoops, I always forget to do that. A sub 1 is 648. All right. Now, the explicit formula is the one that's a little more useful because I could say, what if I wanted the 50th term? Then I could just plug it in this little formula here. But let me refresh our memory. So in general, the explicit formula says that to get any term, you take the first term, a sub 1, and you multiply it by your common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. And remember, this is where things got a little tricky when we were doing this because sometimes we use an ex, the regular exponent like we just did on the previous problem. Like we didn't subtract 1 from the exponents when we were doing the previous problems, but that's because it wears labeled as a sequence problem. Um, the initial amount that we started with in the previous problem was the y-intercept, the zero term, that fake zero term. In this scenario, a sub 1, remember, is not that fake zero y-intercept term. So that's why we have this n minus 1, okay? So to get any term, I'm going to take my first term, which is 648, and I'm going to multiply it by our common ratio. Remember, your common ratio is your multiplication factor raised to the n minus 1 power, okay? And that would work. And that would be the explicit formula. So if I wanted to find, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's do the fifth one. So if I wanted the fifth term, I would take 648 and multiply it by 1 third to the fourth power, because I would do 5 right here where that n is. I would put 5, so I'd do 5 minus 1, so I'd have a power of 4. 1 third to the fourth power, is 1 over 81. So I would have 648 multiplied by 1 over 81. And guess what that is? It's 8. Okay. So just showing you that that formula does in fact work. Okay. So make sure on your paper you have both the, well, you have the geometric sequence that we started with here. You have the recursive formula and you have the explicit formula that we wrote. All right. All right, let's do one more, just for fun. It is Friday, fun Friday, Re that requires an extra problem. Suppose population of 50 crickets doubles in size every, ooh, every three months, not every month, every three months. How many crickets will there be in four years? Uh-oh, see, this is an issue. They talk about months, and then they, it's not even every month, it's every three months, and then they want me to talk about years. Okay, so when you got all this going on, you really gotta step back and think about this. Well, first of all, if it's doubling, you have to write an exponential, function. Okay? So here we go. A times B to the X. A, and this is our initial amount. That's your fake zero term. Remember, that's this initial amount. We started with 50 crickets. Okay, the B is 2 because it's doubling. You don't do the whole 1 plus thing uh, unless you have a percent. If it's doubling, the base is 2, right? To the X power. But the problem is that when they ask me uh, how many crickets there'll be in four years, I don't think I want, I don't, I'm not gonna use four as my exponent because I don't want this population to double just four times. Because in the problem, it tells me it's doubling every three months. All right, let's break this down. So how many times, think about it, how many times do I want it to double in one year? Let's do that. So if it's doubling every three months, how many three-month periods are in one year? Well, since there's 12 months, that would be four times per year. So does that make sense? I took 12 months and divided by three. So I want this, um, these crickets, these crickets are going to double. I want them to double four times every year. But I want to know how many crickets I have in four years. Well, if it's doing this four times each year, then how many times is it going to do it in four years? Well, it'd be four times four, so it would need to do this 16 times. So I'm going to make this X right here 
Uh, when I type this in Desmos, I'm going to do 2 to the 16th power. I'm going to make sure you understand how I got that. Every three months means four times a year. So in a four-year period, you need it to double 16 times. All right, I'll make sure you understand how I got that. Now, I'm going to type that in Desmos. I bet it's a really big number. Let's look and see. So I'm going to do 50 crickets is what I started with times 2 to the 16th power, we think. Oh, look there. That's a lot of crickets. What is that? 3,276,800. Is that an answer choice? Three mil yes, it is. Right here. So at the end of the just four years, we have 3,276,800 crickets. That's a lot of crickets. But gosh, they're doubling every three months. Huh. Think, you only started with 50, and in four years, you got 3 million something. That's impressive. Okay? All right. That's good stuff right there. Make sure all that work is on your paper. And it is Friday, so let's turn in our warm-up papers and get started with our lesson. Thanks.